shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. I thought you might want. All right, Amy Schumer, I see you edit again. So in 2015, you had Trainwreck, and I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Uh, it was well received by everyone from my recollection, and it made a decent amount of money at the box office. Now, last year around this time, 2017, you had Snatch, and that was not well received. It was a textbook definition of a box office bomb, and me and myself, I just didn't like it as much as Trainwreck. But now we have I Feel Pretty, and what did I think about it? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's good, everyone? It's B. Avery here, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for I Feel Pretty. So we got I Feel Pretty now. It is a comedy uh, by Amy Schumer. Um, as far as is, you know, do I like Amy Schumer? I mean, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of her stand up. Uh, performances you can go check a lot of that out in Netflix but just like I said in the intro of this video I really did like train Rex starring uh, LeBron James snatch not so much but now uh, we have I feel pretty um, but besides that something that I'm really curious about is normally I would not give a crap what the box office would be for I feel pretty but I am very eager to know now uh, one reason is because a couple of months ago, you know, you had the uh, incident where Monique called out Amy Schumer. Well, she didn't call out Amy Schumer. She brought Amy Schumer up um, in her argument when she was trying to negotiate with Netflix for a higher pay. And there are so many opinions going on in that story. And people are just like, you know, Amy Schumer is a bigger pool. And, you know, I'm not going to give my opinion on that entirely now. I can, you know, you know, make another video for that. But with uh train wreck doing very well at the box office been snatched not being with snatch not doing well at the box office it's split down the middle but when i was just you know trying to analyze that whole situation i was like well train wreck had lebron james in the film and it also had him in the marketing so was it amy schumer that made the film have make a lot of money or was it lebron james all in the marketing i don't know but you know if i feel pretty has a great box office return then that can go to show that okay amy schumer has an audience you know if she doesn't I will probably uh, probably backtrack myself on a few words to saying, OK, you know, I thought that she did have a pull, but, you know, the train wreck success was just strictly for uh, because of LeBron James. But speaking about the movie itself, um, you guys, this was not uh, um, on my well, it was on my radar. I knew the movie was coming out, but I was not entirely interested in seeing um, I Feel Pretty. It didn't seem like I could relate to this at all. Uh, while, you know, Amy Schumer is funny for the most part in her films, not too much her stand up that, you know, the parts that I've tuned into. Um, I just, you know, kind of rolled my eyes when I saw the trailer for this movie. And I'm like, okay, you know, they're going to have a couple of laughs, but it's just nothing that I can uh, relate to, you know, nothing that speaks to me. Um, now, as far as, you know, who's behind this film that, you know, kind of opened my eyes after I saw it was uh, the director and the writers um, who I wrote. Oh, no, I didn't write it down. Let me look that up. That's right here. I, I wrote down movies that they put together, but I didn't actually write down their names. But I, I, I think you should know the names. Um, the writer and director, Abby Cohn and Mark uh, Silverstein. Now, this is their directorial debut. Um, other than some short films that they've uh, worked on in the past, and they they do work as a duo, but they have uh, written films like Never Been Kissed, He's Just Not That Into You, which I think came out in like oh eight oh nine. Uh, you know, that was a very popular film for me and just some people that I know around that time. You know, it just kind of spoke to us and you know had a lot of conversations and things like that. And also How to Be Single and all those films. You know, while they may not be my favorite, I mean they are written well. So. Um, you know, we're getting that talent over and I feel pretty now. Usually when I do my reviews, when I get my opinion, sometimes I'll let you know how I felt about the film early in the beginning. I just don't want to waste no time, especially when I'm very excited about it. Sometimes I will, you know, make you wait and give my, you know, my assessment at the very end, you know, but before that, you know, talk about all my likes and dislikes. But I just don't feel like, you know, leading you guys on or, or um, you know, waste your time or anything like that. I mean, this video I already been on for more than five minutes, but guys, uh, you may be surprised, but I really did enjoy this film. I liked it a lot. Uh, I'm very, very surprised, uh, you know, how much I liked it. I'm very surprised with how it spoke to me on a personal level. 
Um, I did not think that I would relate to this movie at all in the least bit, but I was just like, oh my gosh, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, I'm a black guy. Uh, Amy Schumer is a white woman. You know, I can imagine we had, we, I mean, I don't know, but I would imagine that we don't have much in common, but you know, as far as the story and what's going on between the characters in this movie, you know, I could have took Amy Schumer out and put myself in, not in every instance, but in a few. And um, just a great thing about it is this is the most genuine, real, true, relatable movie that I have seen in a long time because it just deals so much with what everybody in the world deals with, you know, from varying degrees. That has to do uh, with confidence, self-esteem, um, insecurities that you may have about yourself. I mean, that's what this movie is about. And I don't care who you are, if you are the most fit person in the world or if you're the most sloppiest built person in the world. Everybody has dealt with confidence, security, insecurity, security and self-esteem issues at some time in their life. And, um, you know, this film tackles that just something. I mean, one thing that really impressed me is the very, very beginning of the film and the very end of the film, like the opening frame of the film and the ending frame of the film. Those are possibly one of my favorite parts in the entire movie. The reason why is we got two shots at the very beginning and the end of Amy Schumer and you see her growth from the first shot of the film towards the last. And when the camera is just zoomed in on her, it's just like she actually feels like a real person. She doesn't feel like an uh, actress in a movie trying to be funny. Now, while Trainwreck was funny to me and Snatch was a little funny to me, you know, it just didn't feel genuine. It felt like a comedian on stage or a comedian, you know, in a movie, you know, whether they're trying or not, you, you it just, you know, it didn't feel real. But, you know, in this movie, you no, know, uh, Amy Schumer's character, what's her name? Uh, Renee Bennett, she actually just, you know, she felt like a real person. I was just like, oh my gosh, sister girl, you know, and I can't believe I called her sister girl, but hey, you know, Amy Schumer, I feel you right now. Like I, I know what you're going through right now. And what, what, I, what this film also does, it just makes it so real is it's just a true reflection on society and how people treat people based off their looks. I mean, you have, I guess your butt ugly people, you got your average people, and then you have, um, your super duper beautiful people, but I call them super duper beautiful because really beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but this film paints beauty from what society feels beauty should be like all these rich millionaires and billionaires, what they want to put in the magazine, what they want to put on the billboards what they want to put on their tv show a movie what they say is beautiful has been conditioned in this whole country or around the world for the most part of the way if, if you you know beautiful is this fit is this and if you do not look like this you are not good you are bad and there's something wrong with you you know if you're if you if, if you're if you're 5 11 you gotta weigh this much you gotta have this uh, amount of body fat you gotta you know be this tall or whatever and it's just it's just disgusting because sometimes, you know, in life, you know, we got there's so much things going on and you can forget this and you can get forget that. But this movie, like it really does just show a true reflection of society and just how disgusting the, uh, uh, you know, this also talks about classism and elitism, you know, rich, poor and, you know, all that, you know, look good, look bad. It, it just it, it just really like uh, shows how. You know, um, just how ugly people can be and how people that have the looks that society gives them, how they are treated much better than, I guess, the average looking person. Now, as far as the concept itself, I told you that that's real, but the actual plot in the movie, let's talk about that. You know, Amy Schumer, she, um, you know, she's a somewhat satisfied person. Uh, but she, you know, she's losing hope. I mean, there was one scene in this movie to where it was, she was, uh, uh, she got off work. She was going home. She was looking in the mirror, you know, not, you know, too happy because she was single. She took off all her clothes and she looked in the mirror. She had, you know, uh, you know, her bra and panties on. But she also had I don't know what it's called. Uh, it's whatever women wear to wear when they try to, you know, tuck some things in and not, you know, show all the what some people would consider imperfections. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you know, me personally, I don't have a I don't have a type. You know, per se, like uh, I like regular built women. I like slim women and I like super thick women. Um, I like women, too, that, you know, some people would consider obese or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to use the fat word because I just think that's rude or whatever. And, you know, if that's the word you like, you know, you can. But anyway, I, I, I digress. 
But she she just did not she wasn't happy for with herself. You know, looking in the mirror, she goes to the gym. Uh, she has an accident. You know, she hits her head. She wakes up. She's beautiful. You know, that's fine. It's like kind of like a little fantasy element in this comedy, and I'm fine with that. But I also just gave you the word gym. Like seriously. I've been there before. I've gone to the gym. I'm like, look, okay, you know, you see me, you see what size I'm. I'm, I'm extremely small now. I don't got no muscles, you know, right now. Um, it's 2018. Last time I had some muscles was like 2011, 2012, many, many years ago. You know, y'all been watching my videos. You can tell all my clothes are like hanging off me. They too big. There's a reason for that. And I, I, I will tell y'all all that when I reach a million subscribers. But anyway, I keep getting off topic. I've been there at the gym before to where I'm just like, you know, I'm walking in and you got this big Hulk dude just oh, uh, uh, 100. Uh, you know, I'm just like, damn, bro, like I, I'm just trying to get a 10 pounder. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's intimidating. You know what I'm saying? Or you're intimidated and you just lose confidence because you like, you know, you got some gorgeous women over here with the tights on and their booty all out and they doing this. You're like, oh, I don't want to like no wimp in front of the women i don't want to like no wimp in front of the dudes this dude over here uh, bench pressing 600 i'm over here trying to do 135 you know what i'm saying or like what is this machine here i have no idea how to use it and then you're getting on the machine and you don't know if you're using it correctly and things like that and then you just you worried about everybody if they're looking at you and you just kind of looking frail and just like you know okay maybe i should come back at 3 a.m in the morning that was kind of amy schumann's character in this movie at one point and i'm just like man i've been there before you know and um it's been a while since I hit the gym, just hitting with like years since I'd like been consistent with like weights and stuff like that. But like I, I, I've I've been there before and I, I could, you know, uh, I, I just really, really did understand where Amy Schumer's character uh, was coming from. And so when she hits her head and uh, she has all the confidence in the world. It is just like a beautiful transformation. She is completely different. I mean, this movie is like you all male. I mean, you know, in the dating game or whatever, it, the male always pursues the woman for the most part. I, I've had a woman in my life shoot me a number. It's like, hey, you know, I think you're cute. You should call me and things like that. You know, that's cool. And then I kind of like how the women did it, at, you know, different times or whatever, you know, like coming on too strong, too bold. Like, I like you. And, you know, you may, I, I want you, how many kids you got or, or whatever. Um, but what what point was I about to make? What was I talking about? My goodness gracious. See, I, what I need, I need to stay on top. Of, I, I had a good point. Uh, hold on. I'm not editing this out either. I don't care. Uh, I got this right here. Uh, oh, yes. What the movie does so well when she got her confidence. Oh, I, I remember the point I was trying to make is when little boys and men, teenagers, they learn that where, when you're a young age and you start getting interested in the women going through puberty, you know, somebody, whether it's your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your dad, grandfather, whatever, they, they will sit and tell you, like, look, you know, you get in there, you want to date women. That's great. But rule number one is you got to have confidence. You will not get nowhere in life. You or you will not get any women or any woman if you don't have confidence. That's just like one of the base things right there. The number one most important thing. Other thing is uh, nobody likes a pity party. I mean, those. I remember those were one of the two lessons that I learned once because somebody taught me uh, also do uh, self-experience. But this movie does such a great job just showing the power of confidence, like how much power, you know, you have behind confidence. No matter what anybody thinks of you, if you think that you are the S-H-I-T, then everybody else would think you the S-H-I-T too. Now, they may look at you at early on just be like, okay, what the hell is this brother, this sister on? Are they delusional? Yeah, because, you know, Amy Schumer's character did come across delusional here and there, but it is, at the same time, she still got darn thing done because she just had so much confidence because she was the same person. She thought that she looked, she thought that she looked better uh, than what she perceived herself, but she really didn't. But she saw herself, you know, in a whole new life and it just really transformed her world. You know, I'm just like, man, because I, I, I felt, I mean, there's been times where I would put on, I would walk out the house suited and booted and nobody could tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yes, I know who I am. Brandon Avery, women, come, come. Uh, I'm, I'm joking. I mean, I never did that, but I have been that confident before. But I also have been the insecure guy in the back, in the corner, just afraid to... uh 
afraid to talk to women. I remember when I went to my first party where it was dancing, I was freaking terrified or whatever. But, you know, I ended up getting in there and all that good stuff. But it just, this film does a, just a great, do, great, do, great job of just showing, you know, the power of confidence, uh, relationships, you know, the ups and downs, the miscommunications here and there. Um, it's also very funny. Um, I laugh. None of the jokes seem forced. And most of the jokes just seem very organic. We just, you know, Amy Schumer, uh, Renee ben Bennett, uh, you know, just doing her thing. I mean, it was just like random jokes that had to do with nothing. Random jokes that actually had to do with the story and confidence and security and things like that. We got Michelle Williams in here, which was just in uh, The Greatest Showman, which came out last November, December. We got uh, Tom Hopper in here as well. Uh, he was Game of Thrones. I was like, I knew I, I was like, I know I know this guy from somewhere. I looked him up on IMDb. I was like, yeah, Game of Thrones. We also got Naomi Cam Campbell and her, her Naomi Campbell in this movie, her fine self. And uh, she, her role fit in this film uh, very, very well. Uh, so they all did a great job, too. This film also does a great job of just showing how people that consider themselves up here, the elitists or whatever, you know, how they just don't understand the average Joe, the average Jane or people in the lower class or, you know, uh, you know, um, a lower economic group or, or whatever. And, you know, Amy Schumer's character was the bridge that brought those two worlds together to possibly create a better um, uh, walk of life, you know, for everybody. Um, you know, this film spoke to me in a lot of ways. Uh, the only thing that I did not like about it was um, it, it's only, I think, an hour and 50 minutes. Let me look. Uh, yeah, hour and 50 minutes. And I felt that that was still a little too long. Uh, and why is that? The reason why is towards the end. So, excuse me, you know, in the trailer that she hits her head, she becomes delusional and she starts seeing herself in a, a fashion that she's truly not or whatever. I mean, she thinks she has abs and, you know, she doesn't have abs. And I'm not saying that a woman has to have abs. I'm not saying that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, so she hits her head. She sees herself as what she considers beautiful or what what society considers beautiful. Now, is, she, is the movie going to end with her having that mindset? Um, you know, is she going to hit her head and lose, lose this illusion that she's having about herself? Of course. Yes. That's obvious. My problem with the film, one of the few ones is the length. And then like after that, I kind of thought that her character was just acting a little too ridiculous. I mean, I can understand when you finally see it, it's like, like, whoa, I thought I was beautiful this whole time, but I'm, I'm really the same. I can understand you being scared for a little bit, but there was just a scene or two to where she just took it too far. And I'm like, okay, this is just stupid. Like you had such good writing all the way throughout this movie, but you know, this little five, 10 minute segment right here, it could have easily done without. But uh, other than those two little nitpick guys, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Uh, where we at right now? Um, you know, and back to the budget, the budget for this film by STX Studios, STX Entertainment, excuse me, was 32 million. Trainwreck was 35 million and Snatch was 42 million. So this is the cheaper out of her last three. So I'm very curious what it will do at the box office, uh, you know, because uh, it's a good film. You know, it is straight up and I really did enjoy it. If I were to rate I Feel Pretty out of a one out of 10, I would give this an eight. I had to look eight out of 10. Yes, an eight out of ten. But guys, I said all that, but in the end, you know, that is just my opinion. Okay. But what did you think? I'm curious to know your opinion as well. Um, you know, have you seen I Feel Pretty or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on or have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you not disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, hey, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, check me out that bookmark, and also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. Um, and really, guys, if you really want to help me out, and I've been getting a lot of positive feedback, I really appreciate it. Please like my Facebook page. There is a link down below uh, because what I have planned for the future, uh, it really helped me out. And, uh, you know, this is just kind of uh, grassroots to do that. But, guys, I just want to thank you so much again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of I Feel Pretty. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.